Hello, peoples. I am busy today. I figure I'd just give you an update since I didn't do a video yesterday because I was busy staining my wood. So I stained all this wood. I stained this piece. And I got the piece taken off in the back there. You probably can't see it. I'm too lazy to get up and point to it. And I also cut a piece. I figured instead of mounting this, I'm probably not gonna do this. Instead, I'm, I, I got a thin piece of wood about the thickness of a yardstick. And I wanna mount it all the way across here. And I'm gonna make this into a shelf. It's already got a lip on it, right? It goes back pretty far. So all you need is the, is the wood to hold that up there. I'll put it about right there. And uh, I'll have a shelf that goes all the way across that can hold like little bottles of soap and things and sponges and stuff. And you already know I got the new faucet in, but what you don't notice is that I sanded this up here so that the faucet can turn a lot more. So now it can pretty much reach either side of the sink. And yes, this is filthy. I, I haven't cleaned yet. In fact, there's still sawdust on here. I thought I got it all. I used my little vacuum to get the sawdust, but for some reason it's still, there's still some there. But uh, yeah, I really like this faucet. But I added this really cool um, switch. Now, let me see. It's called a Niagara Trimax. Uh, it's a bathroom faucet um, aerator that has a three position flow rate. So it can go from 0 0.05 gallons or one half gallon per minute, click it, one gallon per minute, click it again, one and a half gallons per minute. So this is really cool. Um, I was looking for some way to reduce my water footprint when I'm washing dishes and stuff, but there are some times where I want a little more water flow, like say I'm filling something up, I don't want to sit here and wait 10 minutes for it to fill up a little cup, right? So this is a brilliant idea. It just, it just changes the flow rate depending on which, where you have the switch. So put it on a half, a one and a half gallons per minute. That's a, typical, that's a typical pretty heavy water flow. Okay, so let's switch, switch it over to one. And you hear it changes, it's a little bit less water. Here's the magical one. One half gallon per minute, it's very light. But you can see it's not putting out a lot of water, but it is a spray. And uh, to me, this is going to be great. And I put this little, I basically, this uh, little angle thing I, I got from the old adapter that was on there. I basically, I put it in CLR overnight, got rid of all that crusty calcium, nasty crap from the hot water tank. Because really, the hot water tank was so cruddy that anytime you ran the hot water, the screen in here filled up with uh, just crap. Right, so when I cleaned the hot water tank, I changed, I got rid of the screens, changed the screens and stuff, so now it's all nice and clean. It doesn't smell anymore either. So yeah, this is wonderful. Um, this was like 10 bucks or something. I will put the link, again, to the uh, Amazon page where I bought it below. But yeah, I like this a lot, because it's gonna allow me to conserve water a lot more conservation than I could before, because that other faucet was, uh, you know, the aerator was great, it put out a lot of water. I mean, I could fill up the sink halfway in like a minute. And uh, that's probably where a lot of my water went that, that time uh, when I was spending the week out there at Thumb Butte. So, yeah, I'm filthy. I've just been sanding and uh, did it like that. I, uh, another thing I did, I'm gonna have to shut this radio off. Another thing I did, hopefully there's enough light. I have a, a jack here an input that go, that's going to go directly to the batteries. This is going to be for the windmill, the wind turbine. And over here, you see, I got I got the solar panel uh, connectors there, and I'm wiring them directly in parallel with the cables coming in from the roof. So uh, the problem I had was the the little holes you can see. They don't have a they don't have a flat a flat piece of metal that when you screw it closed that clamps down, um, which is a bad design. 
because that means you have to um, tin all the wires. Now, I didn't tin the wires originally. I basically just stripped them, shoved them in there, and screwed them down. So I didn't have a soldering iron. But, thanks to uh, one of the family members here, um, her father has this old school, very awesome uh, Archer soldering station that was from Radio Shack. This is probably from the 80s or 90s at the latest. Uh, the old school soldering iron. Uh, I love these things. He's got the, the original box and all the goodies and stuff in here. I mean, look at this. Radio Shack stuff is gone, man. It went out of business. So, I mean, to see any of this old school Radio Shack puts a smile on my face. I used to use all this stuff as a kid. I used to do a lot of uh, electronics and stuff like that and soldering when I was a teenager. So, it's kind of bringing me back. So, what I did was I... Uh, I just I just chopped the wires, restripped them, and I tinned them with the soldering iron. Um, there's the the two going into the positive, the two going into the negative, and then I still have to do these because um, I ran out of time last night. It was like 9:30 at night I was doing this, so I ran out of time. I got tired, and I said, you know what, I'll just do this do this tomorrow. So I have to pull this green wire out, which goes to the the switch, and then I pull this one out, which goes directly to the uh, negative battery terminal and then I'll just put the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative and this goes to the battery so that'll allow me to connect my wind turbine up directly using this socket and I do I did clip the other end and I stuck it up in with my wind turbine so that when it's when I'm ready to, tr to use it again uh, I have the oh, let me show you what I got is I got this voltage booster um, it's got green LEDs and you put the uh, input from the wind turbine on one side and the output to the batteries on the other so basically what I'm going to do is with this and this connector which is the other half of this basically I just cut this off right so that I'd have the input for it because it is square it's squared a little bit I'm not sure they're all like that but anyway, this is nice and heavy duty. I think this is a uh, 10 or 12 gauge wire, so it's nice and heavy duty. And um, so basically, I'll just wire this, the output, which is right there. Just trim the wires, you know, trim them nice and short. Screw them in there. And then I can just plug that, you know, plug this directly into the battery thing. And then on this side, I just run regular wire, like, like this wire here. Just run that all the way out to the wind turbine, which will go out the bottom of the door, and then up the pipe like you saw before. It's just like how I had it in Thumb Butte. And then what will happen is, when this gets at least, I think it's either three or three and a half volts, it will light up, and it will boost the voltage up to, uh, I'm gonna set it at probably 14 and a half or 15 volts, because there might be some loss. So I wanna make sure it boosts it at least to 14 and a half volts. Um, I might do 14.8 if it'll, if that's, I, I don't know. Oh yeah, it is three digits. Okay, so I could probably do 14.8. So it'll boost, um, as long as the wind turbine is making at least three, three and a half volts, it'll boost it up to 14.8, uh, which will char actually charge the battery. Before I didn't have this, so unless the wind turbine was spinning fast enough to do like 15 volts, which it never did, um, it wasn't really charging anything. I don't know if it helped at all, but um, that's why I got this. This was like, I don't know, it was a little more expensive than the last one I got because I, I kind of needed it in a hurry because I'm out of here in a couple days. But uh, I think it was like 15 bucks, 10, 15 bucks. But it'll be worth it because it'll allow me to get some wind power. And I'm painting, I don't know if I already mentioned it, you see my hood up. I'm painting that ugly yellowish uh, bug guard, rock guard. I have that in the backyard right now. I'm just gonna do some flat black primer and just be done with it and then put it back on so that way I, it's just, because it just bothers me. Um, so after that, uh, it's gonna be time to take my stuff down in the storage. I gotta get the cushions, uh, wrap them in, in tra black trash bags and take them down to my storage space. Why black trash bags? Because when I went down there, everything Everything was covered in dust. So even though it's an inside storage, it's 
it's an outside garage type thing. It's not very sealed from the weather. Uh, and, and I'm also kind of concerned that there are going to be rodents that want to chew on my cushions and make them into bedding. So I'm hoping the, uh, the black trash bags will be a little bit of a deterrent. I know that from experience at the last house, um, they chewed right through uh, clear water bottles to get to the water on the other side of the bottle. Um, I had a bunch of water in storage and they chewed through probably a dozen bottles. They chew through a plastic bottle, they're going to chew through a plastic garbage bag, but you know, it's it's more like just a deterrent and I just have to hope that they don't eat through those bags and then eat the cushions because if they eat the cushions then it'll be a hard resell of the vehicle without the original cushions in the back because not everyone's going to want the, the twin bed. And I made this I made this modification. I made all these modifications, in fact, so they could be undone. Like, all this could be undone. You know, a couple of screws. I mean, these screws, these screws, this pole comes right off. Um, and you can slip the chair back on here. I even left, you know, I left all the, the hardware and, the, and even the um, Velcro, which, you know, I hate Velcro on the wall like that. But I left it up there so that when I sell the vehicle, I can say, look, you can just... In probably 30 minutes, you can convert this back to the original layout, right? Take out some screws, pull off the monitor bar, pull out the plywood in the back, and then put the cushions back down. I didn't make anything so, uh, besides the cat door, which isn't really going to wreck the vehicle. I, I should, you know, I have the nerve to actually take that out and paint it black, but um, what did I think about it? I almost want to. Eh, I'll just leave it. <laughs> it's not so bad. I mean, there's other white in here, so it doesn't like a, like a total mismatch. All right, I'm babbling. It's probably been about 15 minutes. I know the battery is probably on its uh, last seconds, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this today. Finish this stuff today. I'll do another update either later today or tomorrow, and uh, that's it for now. You didn't know any better. That looks practically factory. I almost even got the wood color the same. Um, of course, I didn't have the black anodized screws, but I found some brass ones, which uh, I countersunk into the wood. But look at that. I mean, it's super accessible, like real easy to get the stuff out. Yeah, it's going to hold it in there. It's... Uh, Make a shelf that runs across the whole window. That is awesome. I'm like super stoked about that. That allows me to not mount that rack here and keep my extremely valuable counter space. I do have a cover coming in for this that uh, should actually fit exactly on top. We'll see when it gets here. That'll open up the entire kitchen area for counter space. Because usually when I'm doing my uh, my Instapot, I'm not doing the, not using the stove, but I'd like to actually put the Instapot on the stove so that I can use the sink because you know, it's like usually an hour or two I can't use the sink because the Instapot's there. So that should help out quite a bit. Kitchen's done. Uh, I got all the kitchen upgrades done. I have the uh, bug guard, rock guard, whatever you want to call it. I got that painted and install that within an hour. I got all this wood finished. Can't really see it. It's got a little bit of shine to it now. As I use that beeswax uh, stuff. I think it's beeswax. See, it's got a little bit of a shine to it. Looks pretty good. Got this mounted back on. Just gonna mount this piece back on right now. And it's back to soldering. Uh, it's wrapping up, guys. It's wrapping up. Looking pretty good. I wanted to test that uh, extra panel today. I have to install the... I have a... Uh, a tilting kit I got for it. Now, obviously, it's not for putting it on the roof. Well, the kit is. But, um... And the tilting kit is from actually mounting it to something. But I'm going to use the tilting kit as a ground deploy so that I can actually tilt the panel towards the sun. So I can have it on the ground, safely on the ground, and it's not going to fall over and scratch or uh, get broken. Yeah, the kit's like 47 bucks, But, um... For me to make one, I have to do. I'd have to go down to Lowe's or Home Depot. Again, half hour drive, half hour back. 
rummage through the store, get the pieces, which would end up being about $20, 20 to $30 for all the parts I would need. Then I have to bring it back, cut it, um, and, and then install it. So really, I'm paying a little bit of a premium to just take all the work out of it for me. But at this stage, that would save me pretty much an entire day of work. So yeah, that's when you spend 50 bucks over 30 bucks when it's going to save you a day's worth of work. All right, here it is. My ground unit. I got the aluminum brackets. Set of wires that run up under the door and I got this done. Doesn't that look a lot better? The wires basically they hook up right there and they come in right to the solar controller. Um, all this wood is finished and mounted. Putting that piece down here. Look how look how nice this matches. It's a little darker, but uh, I tell you what, it certainly beats what it looked like before. Yeah, I got a new case for my ten dollar phone. It's funny the case costs more than the phone. <laughs> But uh, I figure since that's my primary internet, I better protect it and uh, at least get a case because on the Thumb Butte trip, it was dropped and knocked down several times from the cat. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 5, 11 p.m. Okay, well, it's actually quarter after five. I don't know why there was delay. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 5, 12 p.m. Okay. Yeah, I got, uh, I got my Echo Dot mounted there so I can just call out timers and things and uh, use it a little bit. All right, that's all for now. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Ernie.